elbow behind my back to compress the foot, and then I want to put my shoulder on the mat. So I loosen up, I adjust, and when I take my elbow back and I put my shoulder on the mat here, Nico already taps there. My shoulder hasn't touched the mat yet. So imagine what happens here. You see how he lifts his hips? That's what the legs are for. He lifts his hips to alleviate pressure. I'm pushing down on the hips. And the angle lock is strong from here. Strong from here. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, a leg pummeling drill. So leg pummeling is when we uh, basically fight legs versus legs and we try to get a good position. So we're gonna sit in a position that looks a little bit artificial, but uh, you will get here uh, in training at some point, but it's not gonna be there for long. So we're gonna be in a double pull situation. Both of us are sitting on our butt. I will have one leg on the outside of the uh, Nikolai's legs here, and I'll have one leg on the inside, on the other leg, okay? He'll have the same, so it's a symmetrical position. From here, we're gonna have a grip on each foot here, okay? And now my job is to get this outside leg to the inside. Okay, and you can do this as an active drill for both people fighting to get both feet on the inside, but for now, we're just gonna do one person goes at a time. So I'm gonna cup the back of uh, Nikolai's ankles here. And here's a small detail that's basically uh, almost impossible to see. I'm pinching in with my leg here on the outside, and on the inside, I'm pinching out. So I actually have some good contact here. So when Nikolai just tries to pull his legs out, I'm pretty sticky here. If I'm just relaxed, he can move his legs easy. So I'm pinching in here. Um, if Nikolai has grips on my legs, I want to focus on swimming my big toe out of this hole here. So swim, my knee basically stays in place and my foot goes to the inside. So now I have two legs on the inside. Once I have that, I can start to pull myself in. So I'm, going, I'm just gonna pick a side, I'm gonna go to the left. So I let go with my right hand and I grip on top of the knee. So I'm holding here, here, and this foot is hooking here. So if Nikolai tries to scoot away, pull his leg out, I'm pretty sticky here. Um, if he tries to get this leg on the inside, it's very difficult. Okay. It doesn't look like much, but this is a tight position. Now I'm gonna extend my leg through and I'm gonna scoot my butt in. I'm gonna get my hips as close as I can to Nikolai's hips. And then this foot here, it traveled through. I'm gonna put it on his hip and we're gonna take my inside knee and put it on top of the heel. Now I'm really well connected, okay? From here I can also shoot this hand through for an ankle lock grip. Now I should be very sticky to Nikolai. So if Nikolai tries to scoot away, he should drag me along the mat. If Nikolai tries to get up on this foot, I should be able to put some weight through his hips by extending here, so it should be difficult for him to get up. If he was going to roll, I should be able to follow him. Just roll slowly here. I should be able to follow him and keep that same connection, okay? So one more time, Nikolai tries to scoot away. I'm very sticky here. Now I want to swim this foot out. If he's holding onto it, I want to loop my big toe in the hole that's between his forearm and his leg here. My knee stays in place and my foot loops in. When the foot gets here, I'm pushing in, pulling in, so I'm tight here. All right, when I'm ready to go, I let go of the other leg on top of the knee. This will stop him from doing this here. Try to pull your leg out, Nikolai. Really tight here. Then, and now I can use this heel on the mat to pull myself in. So I'm scooting my hips as close as I can to Nikolai's hips, and then I lock. Knee on top, heel in here, and I want to hide my heel inside my knee here if I can. Now we're in a good position here, okay? So let's work this with our partner. I'll walk around and help you. If I just see a common problem right away, I'll address it here. Let's try it on three. One, two, three. We started, one leg in, one leg out. I palm this out. If Nikolai is really tight here, he's good at holding his uh, elbow close to his leg, right? And I feel like I can't swim this out for free here. Then you want to clear the grip. Go on the bottom of the hand and pull straight in. Right? Here. It, of course, he's not going to have this arm here for long, but I just need him to move it for a second just to get my foot inside. All right. When we get go here, we commit to a leg, pull through, use your heel on the mat to slide in and lock up tight here. It's very important with this other leg here, 
and that you keep it hooked underneath the, the butt cheek here on the other side so we have a, a little bit of a control on the other leg. Also, it's harder for him to pull this leg out for counters. If I keep my foot in tight here, he can pull this out and I can get in trouble pretty quick here. Also, if he can pull this foot off easily here, he can start to jump over, right? And we're gonna look at that. So, the better I am at getting my hips in close, and the better I am at connecting my heel and knee here, the harder it's gonna be for him to strip this foot. But over time, he will get it up. So, we wanna make sure um, that we have a good grip on this foot here. So we just wanna lift up the calf and shoot a hand through. Right. Nikolai here, he's a bit experienced, he doesn't want to get foot locked, so he pushes the foot off the hip and then he jumps his hips over. From here, I could switch my leg entanglement, but just for the drill, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the other leg. So I hook behind the other leg, I put my toes on the mat and I scoot out, and now I can pull myself in on the other side and go here. Nikolai does the same, and now I get another angle of it. He jumps over, I commit to the other leg, Straighten through, pull myself in, and now on the other side. Let's just move a little bit more over here. So, okay, so your partner's pushing the foot down, jumps the hips over. I'm connecting to the other leg right away. Now I'm basically back in my drill before. I kick through, I make sure this foot stays on the inside, pull myself in, and I'm here, right? After you've done this like two times, like on the third try, when I switch, here, Nikolai jumps over. Instead of switching to the other leg, I want you to switch the entanglement. So this foot here, I want you to swim it on the inside. So we have an inside butterfly hook. So my knee stays in the same place, but my foot moves here. So my foot is on the inside, but my knee is on the outside. Okay, this is um, a good position because it's hard for him to strip this hook. Okay, so we swim this in, we keep the other one hooked here, we make sure that we're tight on the leg, and to end the drill, you can either put your other foot on the hip, or if you have long legs, especially compared to your partner, you can shoot your whole leg through and turn your knee down here. Now, when Nico tries to clear this, it's much more difficult. It's harder to get cold breathing from here and we have a good control where we can look for the angle up. So one more time, I'm just gonna start on the other side so you can see the jump, so you can see how I switch. So Nico jumps over, when I feel that, I find the other leg, kick through, pull myself in, go here. Okay, he does one more rep, so he jumps over, and now I just keep my leg in place, but my foot goes from the inside, uh, from the outside here, to the inside, my knee doesn't move, it's only my foot here. Put my foot through, I'm flexing him. I make sure here that I'm not loose because if I'm loose here, Nigel just pulls his whole leg out. So make sure you have a good angle lock grip here. You can cover the knee if you want. And now you pull this knee to the chest and you either go foot on hip or you stick your whole leg through and you turn your knee down. This is especially important if you're rolling against people good at heel hooks because if you let this dangle, you might get an early retirement here. So keep this leg through and turn the knee down. When Nigel looks for the heel hook, the angle's not there. He has to work for it, okay? So let's work this switch here where we jump over a couple of times and then we switch to this butterfly ashy position here to solidify it. Let's try it on three. One, two, three. We get into this butterfly ashy here. As I mentioned earlier, you can definitely finish people with angle locks from here. The problem is that this foot is going to be uh, the most vulnerable part of uh, your leg entanglement here. He's basically always going to be able to access it at some point. Now, if you're really tight, maybe that takes like five seconds. And if you break his foot in four, that's all good. But if you don't, he's going to get out. So it's, it's good to have something where it's, it's harder for him to peel apart your legs, OK? Um, Second thing that's a problem with that position is that, especially when we're competing under IBJJF rules uh, as a beginner, there's no knee reaping allowed. 
knee raping is whenever I force his knee to turn in. So I come with force from the outside and make his knee turn in. Right? Um, when our legs are here on the hip, it's just a lot easier to knee rape. Okay? This is why it's awesome when knee raping is allowed because it's actually a really strong move. But when it's not allowed, it's very easy to fumble this. If my foot drifts a little bit past his midsection, I start to put pressure on here. The ref comes over, gives me the X, and I'm out for the day, okay? Um, so when we have this butterfly hook here, you can see that I'm actually making his knee point out, which is not illegal. So it's harder for me to reap him here. The only real way I can reap him is by pinching in this knee hard this way. So I just want to make sure I'm not putting force on the, uh, uh, on the outside of the knee and making it turn in to be clear. So we get here, we either get the foot on the hip or we get the long boy variation here where we get our leg all the way through here. What we want to make sure of is that he can't pull his leg out this way. So we want uh, our hand deep here. One thing that can help with that, because if you feel like you have a loose grip here, is go on top of the knee because he needs to pull his knees to his chest to get it out. So when I hold on top of the knee, when he tries to pull it out, it's difficult and I can manage to loosen up and relock. If I don't cover the top of the knee when I'm trying to adjust, I lose him this way. So cover and adjust. What we want to do is we want to have a posture for adjusting and we want to have a posture for finishing. When I'm looking to adjust my grip, I need to really get my uh, office worker posture in motion here. I want to roll my shoulders forward, mm -hmm. right? Looking at Excel sheets all day, rolling my shoulders forward. I want my elbow in forward, and I'm basically making a hollow body here, where it's easy for me to adjust here, okay? If I'm, I have this proud, straight posture here, this is how we posture when we're looking to finish, but if I try to adjust anything from here, my hands are gonna be low, and it's gonna be hard to set up the foot where I want it. So, roll your shoulders forward, suck in your belly, take your elbow out here. You can stay on top of the knee, and what I want to do is I want to loosen my grip first and then I will look to shoot my hand through as high on my chest as I can here. Here. I want to attack this part of Nikolai's foot here and I would want to put compression in this way and this way here. I want, basically want to stop his foot from moving. So I go here, I loosen up, I hunch forward, I take my elbow forward making sure everything is loose. There's a lot of space here. This will help me shoot my hand deep. Once I got that hand deep, I should be somewhere around here where I'm basically almost past Nikolai's uh, knuckle here, right on the foot. Here. Once I get that, I just wanna lock up my arms. And there's a hundred different ways you can do it, but they all have to have one thing in common, and that's just to keep this hand high. So you can lock up here, you can lock up here, you can lock up here. It doesn't really matter as long as this hand stays high here. When you get all this in place, pinch in the legs. And what I want to do is I want to take my elbow behind my back to compress the foot. And then I want to put my shoulder on the mat. So I loosen up, I adjust. And when I take my elbow back and I put my shoulder on the mat here, Nico already taps there. My shoulder hasn't touched the mat yet. So imagine, what happens here? You see how he lifts his hips? That's what the legs are for. He lifts his hips to alleviate pressure. I'm pushing down on the hips. And the angle lock is strong, is strong from here. So first and foremost, get your legs in place and you want to slide your grip up to here. Hollow body, everything loose. Slide up, find that good spot. And then you wanna shoot your hand deep on deep in here and put it on top of your chest. Stay curled in. Lock your arms, fall to the side, and now it's time to be a little bit more proud and upright posture here. So our hips go in, our shoulders go back. Here. So I'm going from without me right here. As I adjust, I stay hollowed in. Once I get that high hand and I lock, I want to Go from my elbow to my shoulder, back here. This space is where his foot is supposed to be. 
we've got to bring a microscope to see the daylight in here. If we don't have a high hand, there's going to be more space in here where you can move around. Okay? So get everything in, drop the elbow, and think about moving your shoulder back. From here, legs clamp down, hips go in, shoulders go back, and it's a tap or a snap time, okay? So just make sure, I guys, if, just, if you need to focus on one thing, start loose, punch the hand through, and then you tighten up, okay? Let's try it on three, one, two, three. Something tough, if someone really trying to roll out of the lock, is we're gonna get to where we need to go to a belly down position, okay? So we get in here, however we like. We're looking to work the leg, and um, let's just scoot a little bit along this way. We're looking to work the leg, and we I can see in Nico's eyes that this is maybe his last chance to to win a tournament, and he's he's going for broke, okay? So when you're going for broke, you need to break them, okay? So. I'm here with Nigel, and I feel like maybe he's gonna look to roll this way. So what I'm gonna do is, when I feel like his hips are about to move and he's about to go, I need to make sure I'm st I stay in this uh, this hollow body position, these uh, these office shoulders here, nice and forward roll, so I can go on my head. So I feel Nigel moving, and I'm following him here to this position. So. You, as you probably noticed, let's just move a little bit in here. As you probably noticed, I have a one hand grip, so you gotta make sure you're tight here. From here, it's time to go for a belly down finish, and it's important that we start up high so we have a lot of space to bring our hips down. So if I'm here, all face planted and fucked up, plant your hand, pull yourself up on your forehead. Now I can go two arms and adjust, and I'm looking to open my knees and bring my hips forward down here okay either get him here maybe he rolls one more time and I get him here okay but biggest mistake I see with this is people have their hand low and they already stretched out right when you get to the belly down position and this is why you have to stay a little bit curled up if I feel like he's moving um, ready to go with my forehead to the mat and I have my hand to help post here. This hand helps with stability and also to correct if uh, my head's in a bad place here. I keep everything curled in. I lock up, make sure this hand is high. And from here, I think about sliding my forehead down the mat, bringing my hips in, elbow pushes in, and it's a really nasty finish from here. And if he rolls through, I hit him with the bridge the same position as before here okay so you can do this way um and sometimes it can come from the other way uh, yeah if we get to here and maybe i don't even get to throw the leg over and he's rolling this way then i have to be ready to follow him and now we're back in the same thing okay but if i manage to get this here and i'm Leaning over this side, it's hard for him to roll this way, it's easier for him to roll the other way. If he's rolling this way, just make sure you're not pushing on the outside of his knee. You just basically have to follow him when it's IBJJF. So you just have to follow him. He has to start the movement so you don't get a DQ. And then you send him home with the belly down. Okay, that's the last thing for the day. Just make sure you're curled up here, then you go, and then we're gonna do some rolling afterwards. Let's try it on three.